Would you like to make one of these? Isn't she cute? Or he? We don't know. <laughs> well, that's what this video is about today. Um, there's an organization called Dolls of Hope, and I'd like to just read you their mission from their website. It says, Dolls of Hope strives to bring hope and joy to children, one doll and bear at a time, because we believe every child deserves to have a toy to cherish. We know how much hope, joy, and comfort stuffed toys bring to children, especially children in crisis and children who have nothing. So this organization has a couple of patterns on their website that you can use to make um, bears and or dolls to send to children in need. And uh, Soya Quilting in Las Vegas, this is their service project for this uh, coming few months. So if you're uh, interested in making these, they have kits available and on their website the patterns are available as well. In the meantime, you can watch this video and see how this little bear comes together. The first thing we should do is really read through the pattern and make sure we have the guidelines right for making these bears or these dolls. I am making the teddy bear and I have uh, printed out the pattern, most of the pages of the pattern, the pages that were pertinent to me, and especially those last two pages that actually you can tape together and make your template. And I happened to have some template material, so I went ahead and traced it out onto the template material. Now I have made mine a quarter of an inch larger because according to the instructions, the line of the bear pattern is the line that you sew on. So either you can cut your fabric a little bit bigger as far as how wide you want your seam allowance to be. Could be a quarter inch, could be three eighths of an inch, a half an inch even. Uh, I wouldn't go bigger than a half an inch, but um, yeah, you can just go ahead and make another template, either out of paper, cardboard, or template material, and include your seam allowances. So now, when I cut out my bear from the fabric, I will already have uh, about a quarter inch seam allowance included with this template. So, um, I happen to have some flannel. This is Woolies Flannel, Woolies Flannel from Maywood Studios, and it's just a little white on white dot. And you might think, well, that's just kind of plain, but we're going to jazz it up a little bit. And let's talk some about fabric. In the instructions, uh, it says to, especially this, this page here, important quality control checks. Uh, you really want to pay attention to what's on these because this is going to make a difference whether your bear makes it into the hands of a child or not because if it's not made correctly, it may not be used. So you don't want to waste your time uh, making something for someone that no one's ever going to see. So it says to use uh, colorful, bright, and soft fabrics, preferably fleece, flannel, minky, or knit. And uh, of course this is flannel, it's a little bit heavier grade flannel, so it'll be appropriate for that. As for the colorful and bright, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, soft fabrics, obviously a child wants to hug a soft animal or bear or uh, doll, whatever the case may be. They want something that's, that's, that they can cuddle up with. So you want it to be out of materials that are um, of that that quality and, and that type. Uh, when it says uh, fleece, that's just like the blizzard fleece that you can get that's just a little bit stretchy. Perfect. Perfect for that. Uh, flannel, minky. Minky is, is great too. Um, the Lux minky is a little hard to work with, so just keep that in mind if you end up with some of that. And then it says or knit. So in my opinion, um, knit is okay as long, think double knit. Now you can't really find double knit too much these days, but it, it might be available out there. Or you might even have some double knit in your stash from years ago. That'd be great to use. Um, but uh, I would not use like a jersey knit or a t-shirt knit or um, 
I would think maybe a sweatshirt fleece would be okay. Um, if you if if that's all a person had was something like jersey knit, uh, cotton knit, uh, you could certainly bulk it up a little bit with some SF 101, uh, a Pellon product that's a, a fusible interfacing uh, stabilizer type thing. You you could do that. That would be my last choice uh, for one of these. It says, please add a complete face with eyes, nose, and a mouth. Do not use markers to draw the faces as they often bleed and don't look as good. And if you use a fabric vanishing or disappearing marker and can still see the markings after your bear is finished, use a damp cloth to try to remove them. And do not use French knots on the faces as they are not always secure. Um, and then later on I'll show you how I'm going to do my uh, eyes, nose, and mouth. And then uh, don't use buttons, markers, or vinyl to add faces. So even the little um, sets that you can get for noses and eyes, I think they're probably wanting you to not, not do that either. That is quite a bit more expense to the project as well. Um, I guess there's just some, some safety issues there. I don't know. And then make sure, um, oh, it talks about using uh, pre-glued felt for eyes and noses is, is very hard to sew through and you will have to sew it down. You can't just uh, use the adhesive um, as, a, as a, a final result for the face. Make sure you clip all the seams before you turn the bear right side out. I'll show you how to do that. And then any kind of knots that you use uh, when you're doing your embroidery on the face should be hidden on the inside of the bear and secure. Uh, don't overstuff, don't understuff. Um, make sure there's not any weak spots in the seams that might split open. And then any uh, loose threads and you know, just how you normally do a project. You wanna make sure it's all cleaned up before you uh, turn it over to the recipient. So those are the quality and control checks, so keep those in mind. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started with this since I have my pattern printed out. It's an 11 page pattern. If you don't need all the pages, just select the pages that you need and print those out. You can certainly just uh, print out these two and, and just go for it. It's not very hard, but if you want uh, printed uh, instructions they are there to use so the first thing we want to do is to get our pattern ready and like I've shown you here I've just taken those two pages and taped them together and you can just go from here put your fabric underneath this and then uh, just cut out extra for a seam allowance it says to use um, like a 10, uh, 10 and a half by 13 and a half inch uh, square of fabric or more. It would need to be more than that so that you can get your seam allowances included in that. Now they don't want us to use um, Sharpie markers or anything to do that because that stays on the fabric. Um, it's a permanent marker so you don't want to you know, use that. You can use uh, any other sewing um, pencil or pen that you like to use that uh, won't bleed and won't uh, stay on there permanently. So I had this little remnant here of this flannel and it happens to be right about a half a yard. If you turn it this way I can get two bears out of it. Uh, if, I, if I turn it this way uh, if you're going to use with the fabric, you only need a third of a yard, 12 inches at the most. So um, that's all you need. So I'm going to turn mine sideways and mark it on here. I'm going to turn my fabric right sides together. And that way when I get ready to sew, they'll already be 
facing each other. Okay, so I just have a light line on there. I don't know if you can even see that. And now I'm gonna cut it out. Remember we have right sides together so we can cut both of those layers at the same time. Might wanna pin it if you think you're gonna have some shifting. Now we've got our right sides together still. We've got our two pieces cut out here. Um, now is the best time to embroider on the face. Now I have made another template of the face by itself. Of course this is not going to I'm not going to be able to see through this to get that. Well, I might be able to on this white, but most of the fabrics you're going to be using, you're not going to be able to do that. So if you want, just kind of take your marker. Let me see where they are on here. About right there. I can actually see through mine, but if you had another piece of paper, you could kind of sit it here and then pull up, mark, mark, and then you may be able to just kind of mark where the nose starts at the top, and then from there pull it away and then draw it. Interestingly, I can actually see through this. If you had a light box or something, you might be able to actually see through your colored ones too, I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna kinda mark here what I'm seeing. Okay. You can barely see this on here, but it's going to be enough for me to embroider that. So it looks like I'm going to give you an embroidery lesson. It's been a very long time since I've done any embroidery or cross stitch. 310 is the DMC number for black, and that seems like the best option for a mouth and nose. And... Just going to roll off some here, maybe about, I don't know, 18 inches. And in this case, I probably wouldn't split out my threads. This is a six ply thread that's used for embroidery. And normally for embroidery, you would split those in half or even less uh, to where you only have three. But I'm going to go ahead and use the entire thing and you will need a large eyed needle, which uh, all embroidery needles have a larger eye. If you don't have um, an actual embroidery needle, then uh, just, just use the biggest eyed needle you have that will go through your fabric. Easier said than done. If you have trouble getting it through, just kind of dampen it, flatten it, sharpen it. Although my little scissors are not very sharp. At least for this they're not. There we go. Got them all the way through. You can go ahead and tie a knot.
and cut off the extra. I'm not an expert embroiderer, so this is just what I would do. Uh, on the eye, you want to do sort, sort something kind of like a satin stitch. So you would probably start somewhere. It's so small. I think I would start like over on the one side, just one side, about a third of the way up. And don't pull it taut, just kind of hang on to your knot. And then make a straight up and down line, about an eighth of an inch, just to kind of get started. You can use a hoop for this as well to keep this nice and flat. I think I got rid of all my hoops when I decluttered in December. <laughs> so the next stitch down would be, or the next stitch over would be uh, down just a little bit more because you're following that curve. And the idea is to, to end up with a, a round eye. There's my nose. If you're not happy with how your nose is turning out or your eyes, just keep making stitches over and over until it's solid. And you won't even be able to tell that it's not exactly symmetrical. I think uh, a little bit unsymmetrical or asymmetrical is, is kind of nice because, you know, it's more natural looking. So now I'm going to go down to uh, the smile and I'm just going to take some long stitches, maybe about an eighth of an inch. And then before I pull that stitch all the way back down, I'm going to pull my needle up right in the space. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but right in the space of the loop, bring that up and then that's going to bring that's going to make kind of like a little um, chain stitch. So just leave, make sure you're, you're pulling your loop to one side and leaving that little eighth inch space and then pull your needle back up through it again. And there you're starting to get your little chain stitch. So I'm going to go all the way down to the mouth this time. I got one more stitch to do. Back up through the blank space. And there we go. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I have to go straight back down into the smile. But then come back up at the smile and then do that same thing one way with the smile and then you'll have to start over and do the other side with the smile. So you can really only get one side of your smile and then you'll have to knot off and then go back and do the other side of your smile. So here I am coming up between in that 
plain spot and we'll start seeing our smile appearing. Pull it up through the last space and then take it through to the very end of the mouth and on the back you're going to see your stitches. You're going to see those stitches and you're going to take what's left of your thread and run your knot through those, run your uh, needle rather through those um, stitches that you've made. And that'll keep the, the open end of the thread secure. And you can wind it through as, as much as you want, as much as you think it needs to get it to stay in place. And I think I'm just going to pull him right in through the nose area here and then cut that off. So we have one eye, a nose, and half a smile. So I'm going to go finish my other side of my smile and the other eye, and then we'll be putting this together. Okay, here's our little bear face. Is he smiling enough? I think so. Okay, so now if we want to do any embellishments on this, now's the time to do it. So I'm thinking about putting a little red heart or something on here and uh, that'll kind of make him a little more cheerful. So let me go see what I have. So I actually had some pink cuddle and I just free handed a heart. So I'm going to stick that on the front there. Okay, that turned out cute. If you need to go around and trim off some raw edges, 
just be sure and don't catch your flannel in there. Just kind of fold it over and then trim on the top. These curved type scissors, if you have them, are really good for that so that you don't end up cutting in places you're not supposed to, like through your flannel or through your fabric. So now we just need to stitch them up and stuff. Okay, so get all your right sides together and even. You can pin it, you can clip it, whatever. Um, fortunately, this flannel wants to stick to itself, so I don't think that I'm going to use any pins or clips on this. And uh, I believe they say to leave the right hand leg open. Uh, sew around the bear starting at the bottom of the right leg and sewing on the line you traced or if you left a seam allowance use that and leave a two to three inch opening in that right leg so the right leg for me on this would be this leg so I'm going to start at the bottom it says it's not rocket science, you guys. You know, you can leave an opening anywhere on here and it'll be fine. It says, don't start sewing on the head as it typically results in losing part of the ear shape. So we're just going to start right here. And I think I'll put my quarter inch foot back on. If I can find it. back to straight stitch. I'm going to turn it down to about a 1.8. Nice tight stitch there. So let's get going here. Okay, sewing is done. Now we have to do some clipping. But something I want to mention is as you go around these curves, if you're not used to making items like this, you want to make sure you go a little farther than the end of the curve so that you can start your quarter inch back down on the, the next edge. Um, it feels kind of wrong to do that, but you really need to do that to be able to get consistent quarter inch seams or whatever size seam you decide to use. And then also down here on the, the crotch area, I went ahead on that left leg and, and stitched uh, up, up higher. And then I did a stitch horizontal and then back down and then I back stitched and this is where my opening is so that'll make my back stitch a little the back stitch will make my opening a little bit stronger as I'm stuffing it and also we're going to be able to clip into that deep V there so that we can have um, a nice um, edge there when we turn it over when we uh, turn it inside out so let me get some scissors and I will show you how to do the okay so if you've used a, a large larger like a half inch uh, seam allowance you might want to use pinking shears to cut about half of that off uh, I've just used a half or a quarter inch here so I'm just going to go ahead and make my clips and you don't want to clip through your threads but you want to get within about a 30 second 
of those. And where you have uh, sharp curves, like uh, pretty severe curves, you want to do about every half of an inch. And this will give you uh, a nice flat look on the outside. And then here again, where you see the little armpit area, you're going to want to go all the way up into that area within about a 30 second of your uh, stitches. So just kind of look and see where you have some uh, stress areas that need to stretch a little bit and put those little, little clips in there. Especially the feet and the arms, all those rounded edges. Um, you can't really put too many. So um, say in about every half an inch, but if you turn it out and it still looks a little, you know, bound up in there instead of smooth round uh, edge on the outside, then go back in and 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 do some more. I just like to go ahead and do a bunch before I even turn it. That way I know I won't have to go back in. So here at the at the waist. There's two places you'd want to clip under the arm and also where the leg meets the body. And then around those hands again because they're very round. Just be sure not to clip through your stitches. And you want some sort of scissor that has a very, very uh, sharp point to it. Okay, so I have all of my clipping done. And see how I did it here, here, underneath, also where the leg joins. See, that's not uh, too much of a corner there, but it's enough that you're going to need to clip it. And then here's my opening, and then here's my crotch area there. Okay, so we're going to turn it inside out now. If you have one of these, it comes in real handy. Uh, I suggest using this side more than this side, even though this is really good for getting really pointy uh, square corners turned out. Uh, but you can make the mistake of poking all the way through if you're not careful. So use the rounded one. You can also use um, anything else you have around that will, will turn these out. But don't do it too hard, just kind of press against those seams. There's no way to press them open at this point, so we're just going to have to do it with, with this or with your fingers. Whatever you have, just nothing, nothing really sharp that's going to poke through your, your fabric. Okay, it's just turning out cute. Okay, I'm going to take him over to the iron and get my edges all nice and crisp. Okay, so here we are with our little bear. Now all we have to do is stuff him. While I was over at the iron, I went ahead and uh, ironed down my uh, seam allowances for my opening so that uh, those will go together nicer when I, once the bear is stuffed and I need to close that. I'm just using regular polyfill brand filler. It's really nice and you just kind of want to take it and kind of grab at it in pieces and pull it apart to make it fluffy and then start stuffing. Now this is a very tiny hole so these polyfill bags come with these sticks in them 
for poking. Let me get one, I'll show you. This stick right here, it's got kind of a dull edge on it and it's got a little bit of a blunt edge on this end. And you can take this uh, end right here and just kind of stuff that up in there where you need it. So these sticks come right down in the, and they come in the bag. They're down in the middle of the bag and they're wrapped in a piece of paper, kind of like a McDonald's straw. And you can use these to do your stuffing with. You want to be gentle and not uh, poke too hard so that you don't poke through your fabric. I want to try to sew this up with the sewing machine and then fluff the leg back out. Yes, that was totally doable. So you don't have to actually hand sew it because hand sewing is, runs the risk of it coming loose. So there's our bear. There he is, or, or she. It's a tiny guy. Probably no more than 12 inches. There we go. All ready for his new owner.